Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at how you can access the Grow Up dashboard via a browser. So you can check out all the statistics associated uh, with your solar PV system. First thing you need to do is to go to geinverter.com and then click on monitoring login at the top right. That'll then take you through to your dashboard. So log in using the access information probably typically provided by your solar installer. Then of course you can change passwords and do everything you like by clicking on your name at the top right um, and making any modifications that you need to. So typically you're gonna see the dashboard icon, energy, log and settings. So dashboards, when you're gonna see a whole range of specific statistics associated with your system, you can look at some graphs under energy, and then you can take a look at the log, potentially of any errors and so on that may have happened in the system. So let's have a look at what we've got in front of us here. So on the left-hand side, you've got device types. This is our hybrid inverter, which is obviously required for uh, solar systems, which have obviously panels on the roof, and indeed it's connected to a battery system. Before I go any further, just give you some insight into the system which is on my roof. I've got a 5.3 kilowatt system, Hyundai panels. Uh, I've also got a GrowWatt hybrid inverter, and that is uh, linked up to two batteries, which are two uh, modular batteries, if you like. Uh, they are both 6.5 uh, kilowatt hours each. So that's all hooked up here, and as you can see that on the left-hand side, we've got uh, this sort of diagram which shows you what's going on. So this icon in the middle here is the inverter. We've got the panels and exactly what they're generating at the moment. We've got the um, circumstance associated with the battery. Uh, on the right hand side is the full consumption of the property right now. Uh, and then exactly what is being exported um, to the grid. So you can kind of see exactly what your system is doing, um, how much solar is being generated. So not a great deal at the moment because it is now 7 p.m. It's 26th of May. So we're getting towards hours of the day where it's uh, not working as great. Um, you'll see on the left hand side exactly what the battery is obviously doing. It's discharging a little bit now because a bit more um, work required uh, in the property, electrical consumption and so on. And obviously, this just you can keep an eye on this to see exactly what it's going to be doing, um, you know, during the day and so on. What you've then got on the right hand side is the uh, solar icon there. So exactly what the solar system has done. So today it's twelve point four kilowatt hours, and the one twenty three point nine is the kilowatt hours that have been generated by the system since it was installed, which was actually a week ago. So um, the system's done pretty good in a week. Obviously, it's May, so the uh, daylight hours in the UK are going to be pretty good. So the system's going to work relatively well. Um, however, the past couple of days have been quite overcast and dull. So they've been a little bit less than the, uh, the start of this week. Discharge shows um, exactly what's been going on with the batteries. So it's dish the batteries are discharged 3.0 uh, kilowatts. Uh, today and the total they've discharged is 27.3 since the system was installed. You'll see that you've got exported to the grid there. So today we've exported 7.1 kilowatt hours to the grid and a total of 68.4 kilowatt hours. So uh, you might be wondering, well, how does that all exporting work? Well, the solar PV system will um, serve the electrical needs of the property first. Uh, once it's done that, it will charge the batteries and once the batteries are at full whack they are charged 100 percent or there or thereabouts um, the solar pv will then push electricity to the grid and we'll sort of continually do that obviously you'll need to check the exact rate that your utility provider will pay you for exporting that um, additional electricity to the grid you then got your load consumption which is essentially how much is being used by the property um, uh, on any given day. So today it's 6.2 kilowatt hours. And then in total, um, we've uh, seen 60.9 as a total kilowatt hours, obviously since this uh, solar installation uh, was installed. On the right hand side, you'll see solar revenue, which is an estimate of um, what kind of revenue you could be achieving um, with a system that's installed. It is an estimate, but you will need to edit your particular information uh, for you know obviously what your 
sale price is going to be for electricity exporting to the grid and any savings which you might be making as a result of your system so to edit that you'll need to click on these um uh, triangles on the on the uh, left hand side here so click on those and then you need to click on the edit button here that will bring up a window which will give you some specifics about your system and you need to scroll down and then at the bottom here you'll see your selling price you can edit that and then any other items which you may choose to edit so that you can um, change the accuracy of uh, your solar revenue figures i'm going to do that now so obviously you're free to do that in your own time so what else we got um, on the bottom of this dashboard page so then we've got some energy trend numbers uh, and a graph showing you exactly what's going on with your uh, solar system so you can just hover over each one of these and just see exactly what kind of things have been going on so you've got your system production so you know how much it's actually um, what kind of things it's actually doing during the course of the day you can see all these different peaks and troughs you can see exactly what the solar's been doing so clearly you can see at 625 it starts to kick off and do some things because that's when obviously daylight happens this time of year then you can look at the load consumption when there's been some um, peaks and troughs in relation to electricity usage uh, across the day you can then look at the specific um, uh, self-consumption which is um, exactly what you're using from your system itself what you're exporting to the grid and then what you're actually importing from the grid now you'll notice these spikes that we've got here around about between 6 25 and 8 30 in the morning now what's actually happened here this will be two showers that have taken place so the large spike is obviously because the shower will be approximately around about a 9.5 kilowatt shower electric shower and the batteries can only provide a proportion of that electricity so solar batteries don't push out lots all at the same time they're only as you'll see here getting just above the three kilowatts mark because that's the maximum that the batteries can push out the remainder when you're having something like a shower or another electrical appliance which takes up a lot of energy will need to have some electricity from the grid and that explains why there's this um, big spike here so the graphs are good there's plenty of things that you can do obviously change it for, to the day and then you might change it to obviously the month to see all the different figures that you've got in front of you again you can hover over each one of these to see exactly what's going on moving on down you've got your battery information so you can assess um, actually the green one there is obviously uh, how much has been charged with the batteries on the particular day and then obviously how much you've uh, pushed out from that battery or in other words it's known as discharged um, into the system the battery SOC, SOC is essentially a graph which shows you um, state of charge so uh, obviously when you've got a time like 10 past midnight the batteries have probably been doing one or two things uh, during the evening because they've not been charged up so you'll see they go 91 percent then they start drifting all the way down you get to here we go 86 84 right then down to 82 percent so they're down at 82 percent because they're non-operational during um during darkness and as soon as it gets light they start to be charged up again as the system is operational then very quickly they get back to 100 percent uh, in terms of their state of charge then at the bottom you have your my photovoltaic devices which is your inverter and all the details associated with it so you've got all your kilowatt hours uh, in the day the total for this month the total energy over time um, and a few of the particulars that you've got on here if you click on the settings icon here this will bring up a disclaimer which basically is to say that you shouldn't really be messing with this and you should be trying to leave this alone because there are some settings in here which you could um, make some errors with however there are two particular settings which are good and things that you do need to know about so if you just check on that and click yes you'll then need to um, take a look at these ones here so you've got grid first and then you have bat first so first off let's look at this one so grid first is basically a bunch of settings which i've put in place to push excess 
um, electricity or excess charge from a battery back to the grid at a particular time. Now, the reason I want to do that is because if I, if I drain some of my battery back to the grid between these times, seven and nine o'clock at night, um, I can get paid, I can be paid more by my utility provider by doing it at those times. Why? Because those times are the peak electricity consumption times. And of course, what I'm doing here is basically when it gets to 100% charge, it will then uh, push that back to the grid until it gets to 30% charge. When the batteries get to 30%, um, it will stop. So it will basically um, drain it out during this time every day, seven o'clock till nine o'clock. And so um, I'm not having a load of wasted battery space because I know the next day I'm gonna charge them up again with the solar. So why not just push it back to the grid uh, and that's gonna work nicely. The other option that you've got in here which you can um, you know, set up as a routine, which is battery first. So in a similar way to the way you want to push it to the grid, you may want to actually charge your batteries in the early hours of the morning um, because it might be in the middle of winter, your solar's not working as great, your batteries aren't charging up as quickly, so therefore you want to get some cheap electricity in the early hours of the morning from the grid. And that's where you add these settings here. So the charge power rate and then the charge stopped settings. So it's kind of operating in reverse to the ones that you've got up here for pushing to the grid. Both are really good options, really good things that you need to look at inside the settings for GrowWatt. Once you're obviously happy, you can then click save. You do need to add a, a password uh, in order to save this. So you'll just need to make sure you've got all that information before you do it. But yeah, excellent settings that you can use. What I would suggest is you don't touch anything else. Make sure that the other settings and indeed advanced set is left to your installer. That's not really something you should be getting involved in. Okay, so once you've taken a look at that, what else have you got? You've obviously got basic stats on the number of kilograms um, that have been uh, reduced, number of trees which haven't been chopped down, and then the uh, number of kilograms for the um, coal saved from obviously uh, potentially that, that would have been burnt if um, electricity had to be generated in a different way. So moving on from that, you've got energy, which is um, obviously a load of different graphs that you can look at in terms of what the system has generated. This month, you can see it is 124.8 kilowatt hours. You've got the, um, the amount that's been generated per day. You can see the drop over the past couple of days. That is because it has been overcast. Um, very cloudy days, so not really been as great in terms of generation. And then you've got your times of the day when the generation has taken place. So really useful, interesting information you can get from there. Uh, as I also said, you've got uh, plant management, so you can see a little bit more information about various different tools and things in here. Um, I wouldn't venture in there too much. You've got plenty in terms of what it's achieving here and indeed in the dashboard screen. Your log then goes to if there are any particular issues or, or challenges, and then obviously you can look in the fault log there. Your settings, obviously you can go in there and make some general settings changes. Obviously your passwords, usernames. Um, you can do other things like um, API tokens, things of that nature in here. Uh, but broadly speaking, uh, don't want to be messing around with that too much. Your main areas of focus are going to be inside the dashboard. Look at the numbers, look at the things that are going on and uh, paying particular attention to what your system is doing and then the basics of the, the solar system itself, what you're discharging from the battery, um, what you're exporting to the grid, uh, the load consumption um, and the, the, the solar revenue. Obviously, you might be thinking, you might be, well, how do I go about checking um, whether it's worked pushing electricity back to the grid from the batteries during that 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. window. We can start to look at some of your different graphs uh, and actually just looking at, for example, you know, what is the percentage of the battery um, the next day after you've pushed it to the grid. So I'm planning on pushing out at least over 50% of my battery capacity to the grid between seven and nine o'clock at night. So in the morning, when I look at this, um, I'd probably be seeing that the battery percentages has dropped significantly. 
that's a great way of me checking whether that process has actually worked. So in reality, this is a good bit of kit, great way for you to check what's going on with your solar PV system from, um, and you're obviously your inverter system and batteries from GrowWatt.